On Christmas Eve, I got the call for lungs. We were just about to sit down to eat Christmas Eve dinner. My surgery began on Christmas morning and was complete in seven hours. I spent 10 days in the hospital recovering. It was a gift that I will forever cherish and take care of always remembering the sacrifice that was made by another. This letter came from Joe. He was the recipient of my husband's lungs and I'm excited to share with you about my husband Todd um, and his legacy and how he was an abiding father. Todd and I met at Baylor University and we were married for 26 years. Um, we have three beautiful children and the beauty of getting to grow up with someone in your marriage is that you get to see how God uses them and how he's working in their life and over the last uh, 10 years of Todd's life I just saw so much transformation. A part of that um, was because every morning you would find Todd sitting out in our backyard journal in hand, Bible in hand, um, and he would be spending his time with God. And he would be out there making his notes as he was reading through the scriptures. And God faithfully continued to transform his heart. And I saw it affect Todd's uh, life in the way he parented our children, in the way he engaged with them, in the way he loved them, in the way he encouraged them to know the Lord. Um, and it's been amazing to watch uh, my children on this side of loss because I have heard them say things that have just uh, made my heart um, just filled with joy and hope. One of the things that my daughter shared with me one day in the car when we were driving to the grocery store and I found that very often she will share things when we're driving in the car together and she was looking straight ahead and she had been serving for a month at camp over the summertime and she just randomly started talking and she said, you know, mom, when I am sharing my testimony with people, I don't ever tell them that I grew up in a Christian home. And it kind of uh, startled me. And I was like, what do you mean you don't tell them that you grew up in a Christian home? And she said, yeah, I, everybody says that. What I say when I'm sharing about God and how he's worked in my life, I tell them that I had two parents who passionately loved Jesus. And I tried not to drive off the road at the moment because when she, she could not have said anything that could have made my heart explode uh, with love and joy more. Um, and so as I kept driving, I was like, Lindsay, you couldn't have said anything that could have touched my heart more. So as I mentioned, we have three children. We have a son and uh, two daughters. And our youngest one came into our family um, based upon a trip that Todd had gone on. He was working for his family business and was um, just had the, the brilliant privilege of being able to take employees to go work in orphanages. And while he was on one of his very first trips in Guatemala, uh, a little one and a half year old girl came up and kind of attached herself to him. And I had asked Todd years before of if he would be open to adoption. And at that point he was like, Robin, I, I really don't think we could do that because I just don't know that I could love a kid that's not my own as much as I already love our two. And so I had just kind of put that dream on the, the back burner. And I get a call from my husband while he's in Guatemala and he said, I don't know what God's doing with my heart, but I think I've found our daughter here. And, um, so that began this brilliant process, beautiful process of two years of, of pursuing uh, what was best for her, trying to figure out, did she have family? Did she have other options? Um, and after two years uh, and his diligent work legally, um, getting through the process, we were finally able to bring her home. And so she is our youngest one. Todd and I had a lot of growing pains early in our marriage and as young parents. We were trying to figure out this thing of how do you disciple a child? How do you teach them uh, about faith? And we did a lot of fails along the way. Even when things play out in ways we don't anticipate or we would never ask for, God does so much good in the midst of them because He is a God of promise and He keeps His promises. He's faithful and He's a God of hope. There's so much that I look back on now and I feel like, man, he lived a full life because he had grabbed a hold of that truth and had lived as an abiding father for my children. Not perfectly, um, 
beautifully imperfect. And yet in that imperfection, the Lord shines even brighter because then it becomes the Lord's strength and not how great we are at doing things or, or how we're naturally gifted. It becomes the Lord's strength that you're living in. So even in the weaknesses, even in the broken places, God is the one who is glorified. Um, and I think that's the beauty of being an abiding father. And so as I have stepped into life now after Todd, it's almost as if I get to see this beautiful legacy even so quickly into my uh, year and a half of um, time here without him where I'm seeing where I'm seeing the work that God began in him and how it is continuing on.